everybody, my name is Tanya and I'm going to be participating in the Underhyped Read Along. So the Underhyped Read Along is organised by Charlotte over at Ramblings of an Elfpire and this is actually the second Underhyped Read Along. The first one was in July last year which is when I just started my channel, I just finished the Booktubeathon and wasn't sure what was happening and whether I was continuing on so I didn't have time at the time to participate but I thought it was a fantastic idea so now that it's come back in January I'm definitely going to be participating this time around. So the Underhyped Read Along will be running from the 19th to the 25th of January, so this Monday to Sunday, and it's a busy week next week. I do have some time off, but also my sister is getting married on the Saturday and I'm part of the wedding party, so there's going to be a lot of wedding stuff happening as well. So I don't know how much reading I'm going to get done towards the latter half of the week, but we'll just see what happens. So the idea of this Read Along obviously is to read things that you consider are underhyped, and I'll leave a link to the announcement video down below, but basically it's whatever you feel to be under hyped. All of the things that I have to show here are actually under 150 ratings on Goodreads. The highest I have is actually only 133 ratings, so I think I've got things that are pretty obscure. My TBR is basically going to be under hype reads, the obscure Australian titles edition. So the first two things I've got are things that were actually on my TBR for January already um, and are not really things that are exciting for anybody else, but they are very obscure, so underhyped and do have a very low amount of ratings on Goodreads so I'm counting it for the read-along because it's something that I need to read this month anyway. And they're my two school books for the month so in year 7 I had read Beware the Gingerbread House by Emily Rudder and Soldier on the Hill by Jackie French. I haven't read these yet this month but I figured they were perfect for the underhyped reads read-along because nobody's heard of these. Nobody in Australia unless you've read it at school have probably heard of these. I don't know whether they're necessarily underhyped in that whether they're worth much hype, but I'll be rereading them in the month so I'll be able to judge a little bit more clearly soon. So Beware the Gingerbread House is actually the one with the most ratings that I have on my TBR. This is the one with 133 ratings on Goodreads and Soldier on the Hill has a very modest 64 ratings on Goodreads. Basically I'm reading these for my read through of all my school texts this year and I'll leave a link to my video about this project down below. So these are the first two things that I definitely want to get to this week. So both Soldier on the Hill and Beware the Gingerbread House were books that I read in Year 7, which makes the next book that I have here very fitting. Coming in at 46 ratings on Goodreads, I have The Comic Box by Adrian Sterling. Adrian Sterling was actually my Year 7 English teacher, so the teacher that I studied Beware the Gingerbread House and Soldier on the Hill under. I also had him for Year 9 and Year 11. He didn't have any books out when I was at school, but since I've graduated, he has now gone on to publish two books. The first one was called Broken Glass, and I read that a few years ago now, but I haven't got around to reading his second book. So I've been meaning to read this for ages, and I thought, well, what a perfect time than this. I think it's a very underhyped author, uh, who nobody will have heard of, and I'm interested to see what his second book is like. This is a book that's set in suburban Australia during the 1980s at the time of Haley's Comet. I'm really pleased for the push to pick this up and like I said it's perfect to read in tandem with my year 7 books because Adrian Sterling, and I have to focus not to call him Mr Sterling, was my <laughs> teacher in year 7. And then also quite fitting, the fourth book that I've got is an author who I absolutely loved when I was in school. So I was introduced to him in grade 5 and then read him all through my teenage years and absolutely adored him. And he's a fairly popular Australian author, but it's a recent release, so there aren't many ratings yet on Goodreads. So coming in at 121 ratings, I have South of Darkness by John Marsden. This is something that I got for Christmas, and I'm so excited about it. John Marsden writes a lot of teenage fiction, but this is his new book that is actually for an adult audience. So I'm really interested to see how his style changes writing for adults. And again, I'm really pleased to use the Readathon as an excuse to pick this up, because a new John Marsden book. This is set in the late 1700s when Australia was a penal colony and it follows a character who hears of a paradise on the other side of the world, Botany Bay, and commits a crime in order to be transported to Australia, which doesn't seem the best plan to me, and so I'm really intrigued to see where things go from there. And then finally, I've got a book that has one of the lowest amount of ratings on Goodreads on my shelves. And this is something that I got for Christmas in 2013, so it's about time that I get into it. And so coming in at 18 ratings, I have The Godfather Was a Girl and Blanche Dubois Was a Guy. This is a book that takes a bunch of characters from popular culture, so people like The Godfather or Blanche Dubois from A Street Kind Named Desire, and tells kind of the origin story of them. So I have had a flick through and read some of the start of this, but I haven't got all the way through yet. And because it's just little sections on different characters, so here's one on Mickey Mouse, uh, Scrooge McDuck, they're just little one-page 
uh, blurbs about different characters. I figure this is good for a readathon. I can kind of dip in and out of this between other things and just read maybe a few sections from this a day. I don't necessarily expect to get to the end of this in the week. We'll see what happens. But I'm wanting to make some progress on this and, and finally get to it because I was really intrigued. It's something I'd never heard of before. I got it as a gift and I think it's a really interesting concept. And so when I was looking at my Goodreads shelves to see some of the things that had really low ratings when this popped up, I couldn't help but put it on here. So these are the books that I'm going to be choosing from for the Underhive Readathon. As I said, I don't know at this stage how much reading I'm going to get done in the next week, how much uh, wedding preparations are going to interrupt, and I'll be perfectly happy if they do. If you're participating in the Readathon, let me know down in the comments so I can now watch your progress as well. And if you have managed to have heard of any of these, which I will highly doubt, do let me know down in the comments. And as always, thank you all for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye. Come on. Not so hard. Okay, you can go now.